Welcome to another feature match from the most competitive tour in the world, and that is the Euro Tour. This is a match between Mr. Jungo from Switzerland and Mr. Fortunski from Poland. Race to nine, Jungo to break first. All right, just missed out on making the blue corner ball and the one ball in the side. And that will then very often mean nothing else will go down either. So a dry break, but pretty uh, hampered start. Our Chinese snooker, the, some, some of us used to call it. So bridging over the ball, of course, two ball he's bridging over. Hard to get position on that one. I think he might be playing safe. Didn't want to hit that brown. Cue ball. We're about to find out. All right, no good. So an unforced error. Got the one. He got the one ball where he wanted to, but nudged the seven ball. That changed the path of the cue ball and. It was all downhill from there. So first, clear-cut chance for Jungo, but I think the two-ball goes in the pockets nearest to us. We might even have a 2-9 carom, although with the nine ball so far away from the pocket, I don't think he'll be attempting that. So anywhere position with the right side pocket and the blue two, or straight in on the two, will do. might come too far that's my uh, colleague commentator Dora the Egyptian cat you may hear her from time to time when she gets hungry or just uh, plain old annoyed with that positional shot that Jungo just played so now this will be very difficult because if he wants to swing his cue ball up table and back down table again the eight ball is a big ball so I think he's going to run into the 8. He might be able to hit the bottom of the 8. I don't think so, though. So just... Ooh. Well. There goes your perfect match play on both players' sides. That stretch meant it was hard to stroke that cue ball well. And he didn't hit the three ball full enough, so now faced with a thinner cut than he would wanted. Cue ball will go towards the brown. But in order for the three to reach the pocket, he might have to go up and down. Yep. Hit that three ball very thick. Therefore, his cue ball was obstructed more than I think he imagined. He imagined coming off the rail that he was nearest and back up a little bit. So now what? This is a pretty uh, interesting game one. Attacking option would be to bank it and follow the cue ball through. Far from certain for position on the five. I think safety is in order. Although you really don't want to play safe if it's your second chance of the rack already. So you could send the, the four ball hit the side pocket rail just north of the right side pocket and then send the four ball beneath the nine ball five ball that might be the widest wall he can naturally achieve bring his cue ball where it is now maybe the seven ball may also form part of that covering wall what would you guys do here What else is there? Hmm. I mean, you could cut the four ball directly towards the nine and play safe behind the brown and try to cut the four underneath the nine ball. All right, it's taking him a bit of time to decide. Let's see if he can execute. Well, he really didn't want to make that four ball, I can tell you, because look at where he would have been had he made it. All right, so. So this, as you can see above the names, uh, below the left, above the names, is the loser's qualification. So, both players have played at least four or five matches. And somewhere along the line, they uh, had to 
accept defeat. And so may both be a little bit filled with some negative pool energy. Although one of them may have lost in the first winner's round. And may have won four or five consecutive matches on the left side of the draw. And may be on fire actually. So we don't really know. I would have to check the draw. Which you can do as well. It's uh, epbf.com. And there you can find the Euro Tour previous results. The draw all the scores, the rankings, etc. Right, thinner cut than he wanted on the six. Cuba will naturally zigzag back and forth, left to right. That might end up somewhere in between. Yeah, that's very good, actually. Well, it needs to be straight or somewhere thereabouts on the eight, because the nine ball is in the same line as the eight ball. Right, so pretty interesting first rack. It will go Dimitri Ungo's way, you'd imagine. So the winner of this match will qualify for the last 32 players single elimination stage. So really important prestige wise, prize money wise. All right. See if you can make the orange five. Didn't. Made the wild six ball though. And that one ball is placed very nicely. Threw his hand up because the eight five became a cluster. And what can you do to open that up? Could open it up with the four ball. I think that might be the cleanest way to try it. See, I'm already thinking ahead. I hope you are as well. So, would like to kind of be, if you imagine, uh, he would like to have position on the four ball, whereas cue ball is now. So he could roll the four in, go into the left rail, and flick the eight away to get position on the five. Who did he even get to the three ball? Doesn't look like it from here. Now much more difficult draw shot so a lot more skill required but still very possible he's definitely gonna hit this bunch you reckon too deep ah, pretty nice cue ball will drift to the left of the right side pocket and that's ideal really just needs to hold it so roll it softly so Mieszko Fortunski, a very capable left-handed. Makes the game look easy. Albeit he can sometimes play the game in a bit of anger because of previous mistakes that he's made in the, usually in the match he's playing. So it does get down on himself, although he has eradicated that a fair bit from his game. That's why his results have been better in the last year or so. You can go to break, won all the score line. No, not really a clean cut break hit. And that seven ball, which was the corn ball he was trying to make, never got near to that bottom right corner pocket. So making the one would give him a shot on the blue two. So he may want to stick around there. No need for the cue ball to get really close also because the three ball's in the way. Oof. Well, doable, but now it's harder to get his cue ball up table. Can only kind of spin it with right spin. Curl it around the four. And maybe hope to land halfway up the right side rail in between the corner pocket and the right side pocket. Don't want to force the angle with a lot of spin here because that makes the pot a lot more difficult. Yeah, yeah. So if you can imagine, had he left his cue ball where the one ball was, which is kind of where the three is now, how much easier his shot would have been on the two and he would have been free from the rails. It would have been much easier to apply that left spin that he needs to spin around the balls and come back to center table. Ooh. 
So much so, it refused the shot. No good safety. Now Dimitri will hit this either via via air or via side rails. The uh, shaking pool table is not your equilibrium being tested. Well, it may be actually, but it's not you. It's the camera that is hanging from the tri lights surrounding the pool tables. And sometimes somebody walks into him. Somebody, sometimes somebody leans against him. Good jump shot. Good hit by Yungo. But won't get the snooker. There's a big wall to hide behind. Difficult shot this is. I would almost roll this in and let the cue ball roll in between the red and green for position on the three. No, no use applying backspin because that will make the shot three times harder at least. Nice. See, that was the natural path so then you could just focus on making the two. Five nine combination. I don't think he'll be playing for that. Although he does have more angle on the four than he wanted, because he kind of wanted to leave his cue ball there. <laughs> but that's not. He really needs to dig into the cue ball with a lot of bottom left spin and kind of drag, hold his cue ball as well. So. A bit of a stretch as well. All right, four went on both those options. That's pretty good as well. So he can screw his cue ball anywhere to the left side of the table and that will give him the desired angle on the six. Would like to be somewhere near the left side. Oh, hit it too straight ahead. So he wanted his cue ball to be as close to that left side pocket as, as possible. And then sometimes you just force the angle Mieszko Fortunski displaying some unforced errors in this match so far. Could have gone 2-1 up and then it would have been his break, meaning he would have broke Jungo's serve, so to say. I thought he may have banked that one. Good safety, well, good no pot given. But if you keep doing this, Mieszko is going to punish you with a better safety soon and that may very well be now what are the options I think try to hide the follow the cue ball through behind the 7-9 it's a pretty big wall then you're kind of sending the 5 into the openness so it would solely be cue ball control it could also thin the 5 and bring the cue ball back where it is now but that's a tough shot Ooh, double hit. Hit it way too thick. Left the chance for Yungo to win the game that he broke. Well, it's a race to nine. This may take a while here. So often in this, uh, at this level, it's a one or two inning games. Not so this time, or yet anyway. They may very well play perfect after this. Nice position from Dimitri. Dimitri, albeit not a very old player, but he's been around for a while and actually went away from the professional game for quite a few years. And now in the last two years or so, you see him popping up at all the important tournaments. He was already a major threat about 10, 15 years ago. I've always liked his style. Quite a smooth player. It's got a nice... <laughs> okay. Just as I was bigging Dimitri up. Unbelievable. Missed the straight in six. He missed a fairly straightforward two ball as well, remember? Have these boys been doing mushrooms or something? Okay. Not easy either. 
hard to avoid hitting the nine ball if you hit it a little bit harder, no matter how much topspin you give it. And he needs to come to the left side of the table. So he's going to draw it through the nine. Ooh. Really below par performance from both players as he slams his cue ball or tries to slam it through the rail. Nothing he can do, we'll just cut it thin and try to get a snooker, which may still be very effective actually, although Dimitri will always hit it. Didn't get the snooker, so we'll see Dimitri try the very same thing. player that gets the snooker knows that their opponent will hit the ball, but then thereafter it'll be hard to get away with something good, like a snooker or a safety. So let's see what happens here. I do like these tactical games and not just run out games. There's a lot more to see and learn. So lefty eight. Of course, Miesko wants to drive his cue ball two rails, zigzag it to the other side of the table, cut it as thin as he can. But it's not easy to cut it so thin to bring the eight down on this short rail. Okay, well done. All right, so that impasse has now been broken. Now he's got a pretty good figure. If he hits the eight ball, half ball, two thirds of a ball on the left side from where we're looking. Has a nice route for his cue ball well, behind the eight. And that's actually... Yeah, there is about a ball's width in between the rail and the nine ball. So that is a fairly doable area, although he might give up the eight. So could also split the two balls. Whoa. Oh, no! <laughs> wow! Fluke of the tournament? Well, had it been a more important t moment, it may have very well been. So Miesko, definitely not a happy chappy. A, with his own performance, and then to have seen that fluke happen. And that's, that's the game sometimes. Alright, so he wants to get back to rhythmical run-out ways. You know, and after all that, he's still two on, only two on down. Has a very doable chance if you'd ask him to get back to two all. And then after all those mistakes, you know, sometimes the amount of mistakes you make, you may have already be seven seven one down or something. So you just have to look at it in a positive way, no matter what situation you're in, and really try to get yourself into a realistic mind frame. That this is a lush situation to be in after all those errors. Yeah, and that's kind of the art of pool when you're back at the table just to act like nothing ever happened. You know, you kind of have to give yourself the memory of a goldfish and really just quickly forget and move on. I mean, that's a, that's a good philosophy to have in general in life maybe, but also in pool. Nice, all right. Fortunski with a break and run. So Jungo hasn't been able to get that round seven close to the corner pocket. It hasn't hit the one ball full enough. Now he hit it almost too thin, but that does give him a better chance of making the corner ball. Ooh, did he get a shot on the one? Well, even if he did, getting the cue ball back to the north side of the table. It's going to be... Uh, Tough task. Tough to hit this ball so thin with all the bottom right spin that you need. That needs some uh, deflection knowledge no matter what kind of shaft you're playing with. D 
do love these shots though because when they go in such a confidence builder because you really need to aim this well stroke it well very much depending dependent on the speed you hit it with as well if you hit it at the speed you imagine hitting it at then it will deflect the way you think but if you hit it 20% slower or harder or more it's gonna end up hitting that one ball in a completely different spot if he's going for it could send the cue ball underneath the five cue ball behind the seven and yeah and as you could see that was a rolling ball kind of a half ball hit and that's a very regular shot to play a lot less skill needed than the option I was going on about for so long two rail kick shot Good chance of making it if he makes it his cue ball will travel back north for a very doable position on the two ball perhaps anyway let's hit this sucker first and hit a rail sometimes you hit want to hit a certain side and you miss the whole ball now nostradamus okay so Simple but very good safety from Dimitri. Try to sketch the pattern for yourself. Basically wants to end up straight in on the pink four to draw his cue ball back ever so slightly. And then five to six to seven to eight. Very doable, minimal cue ball movement. So a half a tip of right spin maybe. If you play left or right spin, it's really important to know what half a tip or a whole tip of left or right spin can do for you. Because the more you aim to the left or right, the more it deflects and the harder the shot becomes or the pop becomes. He decided to bring his cue ball in and out of the corner. It's a bit more of a natural shot and more strokey. Could leave himself an angle. In a way, I would like to be straight as well. Yeah, there is pointing. It's better for the six in the right side pocket. And that is under stroke, Dimitri. He may be forced to swing his cue ball all around the table. lackluster shot because even if he would have been high on the five ball even if he would have had an angle let's say in the line between the five ball and the right side pocket that would have been good as well so anywhere between there and the right side pocket and he got too low may even bank this shot Ooh. good shot good save very important that if you get out of position you correct yourself are able to correct yourself straight away under hit that one as well need to hit his cue ball lower still very doable but more quality required in general on that five ball on the six now on the seven Dimitri is one top player, I can tell you that. Very talented, very experienced, composed, can play under pressure, and the pressure is not even on at this very moment. Bar be it from himself wanting to play well. Too straight on the eight, though. I mean, these side pockets, I can tell you, they are small from the angle that the nine ball's at. Especially if he leaves his cue ball on the rail. Yeah. I would shoot this top right. Because then you can still kind of hit the right side rail and it may still trickle in. As was demonstrated by Mr. Jungo. Alright. Game number six, Mr. Fortunski. Had a break and run out, remember, just now. Made the corner ball. 
One ball hit the knuckle of the side. It's still dressed up pretty nice. Key pot here. And wants to keep his cue ball. Draw it back to the north side of the right side pocket. Although he could use also an angle on the two, even if he makes the two and hits the brown seven, that could actually help, because at the moment, that six is the the ball that needs the most quality of position or solution of breaking something open. Nice. Alright, thinking ahead. That six ball can go if he leaves his cue ball where it is now. Now that would be ideal. But of course, he's shooting the orange five before that. So to bring his cue ball from where the five is now to where it is now is not an easy task, or he needs a very specific angle to make that natural position line. Let's see how he solves this. I don't think the six passes the eight anyway. Maybe it does, because this looks like he's playing deep into the bottom right corner, out for the six in the top right corner. No, okay. Doesn't go. Well, that's pretty good. Nice tempo. Needs to shoot the six in the side, though, because the seven doesn't pass the eight. Can shoot this... Phew. Can shoot the six in the corner, but then has to shoot the seven in the side. Ooh. Or stun his cue ball. Make the six in the corner. Stun his cue ball. In any case, that makes this corner pocket a lot less friendly. The jaws of it, anyway. Might shoot the six and the seven in the same pocket. Might play safe. Good shot. That needed a very specific hit on the 6 and on the 7, so... Alright, so in these last two racks, Miesko playing fairly flawless pool and good shot making. Getting back to his uh, kind of normal ways. It'll be Dimitri to break. It is three all, race to nine, for a spot in the best 32 players of this Euro Tour in beautiful Zank Johan Himpongo in Austria. Go there if you have a chance, it's beautiful. So Dimitri either reliant on the one ball going in or a wild ball because he hasn't come close to making the corner ball. If you make the one, the two is racked at the bottom of the rack. The one ball you can kind of know where it goes if it doesn't go in the side, it goes to the north side of the table. The two ball is so random that it's almost impossible, or it's impossible to play position on it. So you're really reliant on a bit of a, a nice roll on the blue two. Which more often than not doesn't happen. Good safety by Dimitri, simple but effective because the swerve is not really on. Well, it could be on. Dimitri just checking if the two ball's frozen. If the two ball's frozen, then kicking it, let's say, and just hitting the two, making the two hit that rail, doesn't count as a rail, since it's already touching the rail. You would have to hit the two, and the cue ball can then hit the rail, or has to hit that rail, or a different rail, or any other ball. So just making the two ball touch that rail is not good enough, if it's frozen. If it's not frozen, then this whole story is for nothing. I think he's going to kick at speed to try to create that distance, and that is good speed. This is not fortune, is more in the realm of, of possibilities. The speed he hit it at, he knew he was going to hit it, make a pretty full hit. This is tough action. What would you do at home? Cut the two on the right side. Bring the cue ball back to where the pink and black are. And the seven ball is a, a big ball to have to avoid then.
You know, I'm gonna go to that epbf.com website and just tell you about the routes these two men have taken to come face to face. That might take me a while because they have this might be the Euro Tour. They have the most contestants because it's in, played in Central Europe, so we get all the players from the Balkan countries, all Italian players, all the Austrian, the Germans, Scandin Scandinavian players are usually there, all the Polish players. It's really one of the hardest ones to win. As Dimitri comes to the table with a two ball, that doesn't look that appetizing. Right. I'll tell you when I've found their names. So normally we at the Billiard Network are famed for cutting out the racking times and the long thinking times. I think maybe uh, the producer here fell asleep himself and forgot to cut out Dimitri's fairly long thinking time. Anyway, this gives us time to think about it ourselves. So in winners round one, Dimitri Jungo beat the very capable Lars Kukherm from Germany. And then let me have to fish through all of the Polish players. Miesko beat Yip of Kindling Yip from Hong Kong. So a Hong Kong player turned up in Austria. So both winners of their first round matches. Then in the second round, second winners round, Dimitri Jungo beat Simone Zappi from Italy, nine racks to three. So convincing win there. As he see him execute a very good safety might have left the jump shot but the two ball nice in the open yeah left the jump shot that makes this kind of nullifies the safety and uh, Misko Fertunski in winners round number two beat with uh, Croatian ace Roberto Bartol and that was by scoreline of also nine racks to three so Misko here oh, can try to make it his cue ball will swing around the table in a quite, quite a wild manner. Hard to get away with this. Might not give away anything easy. Yeah, that's very doable, isn't it? Alright, let me scroll down further. So then... The winner's qualification... Oh, actually, Dimitri Jungo beat the very capable Spanish champion, David Alcaide. Nine racks to eight, that was. And Mieszko beat his fellow countryman, Daniel Maciel. Nine racks to eight as well. So they both came through final rack deciders not too long ago to end up here. <clears throat> what would I do maybe send the two ball almost straight ahead and try to make the cue ball run into the brown seven to hide behind the red three that might be then you have a few hit points on the two or a wider hit point let's say to make that happen you can try to make the two and try to do that very same thing Although if he tries the two, I think he will hit more of the south side of the brown ball. Which could still give him a snooker. I mean, to play the 2-7 combo. Phew. Yeah, maybe, because the 7 ball is pretty close to the side pocket. So the 7 ball has a pretty wide hit area. Hmm. Can cut the two very thin on the left side. 
Send the two underneath the seven. Try to get a snooker that way. Even if he hits the seven with the two, he might still get the snooker. Interesting, interesting shot here. He's elevating. That makes it all a bit more difficult. I mean, if you make it, it's a nice and dominant way of, of trying to, uh, or of clearing that hurdle. And if you then run out, it does give you a bit of fire in your belly, but I don't know if that was the shot to play, especially the mistakes he's already made in the previous racks. So it's not like his arm was full of confidence and red hot. So, Mieszka with a chance to take the lead. Well, not like that. Wow, this would be disappointing in his mind. I mean, there's no pot possible. You can only play safe by potentially cutting the three and hitting the top rail and then the cue ball behind the eight. I mean, that is a very narrow mar or no margin for error. I like that safety though. Very good. Nice. So, um, do press the like button if you're enjoying this match. Um, it will help global pool in general and of course the billiard network to gain wider popularity. Did he hit that pink fall ball first? Mm. Either way, Miesko has a shot on the three. Of course, he would rather have ball in hand. Yeah, it was good safety by Miesko. So... Another chance to gain his fourth rack of this, excuse me, of this match. Good shot there. Nisko has a lot of cue power. I mean, isn't it often the case that the, the left-handed players you know, it's just like they play the game a bit more natural. They really just get down or extremely quickly comfortable in their stance. Seem to find the hit point on the object ball really quickly. And usually you have a, a very powerful cue arm, meaning a very smooth, accelerative cue action that needs a little power to make the cue ball dance to their own music. All right. So a very competitive match this. I've seen all kinds of levels of play. Unforced errors, good run outs, big misses, easy misses. Yeah. Mishko is the one breaking better though. And when the one ball was still racked on the spot, the break wasn't working, you often saw players change sides. But now with the template rack, you don't often see that. Alright, made the corner ball and the one ball. Reliant on a friendly two. And what a friend it currently is. Now can he make this and draw his cue ball straight back? off the right side rail and then spin it in between the black and the pink. Straight back off the right side rail. Oh, it's the stretcher. Ooh. Oh, the pink is the one on the left. I thought the pink was the one on the right. So, very good. Tempo controlled shot. 
touchy-feely and execute it very well. So, as a rule of thumb, I would say if the ball you're currently shooting gives you a shot on the next one, you need a special reason to forego on that position, and that's the case with the 6-7. If he makes the 6, he's got a shot on the 7. Could adjust the angle by following it through and come off this bottom rail. But you know, there's no need to forego on this position, give that away, and then try to get a better position somewhere. Sometimes it's possible though, but you need a good reason to... Okay, yeah. He had a bigger area margin for error by applying a bit of screw back, because even if he would have landed straight on the 7, it would have still been okay. And these side pockets are pretty small, I can tell you. Not that the corner pockets are large. The sides are smaller, especially coming in at an angle. All right, so... Mr. Miesko, Nicknamed the Butcher. I don't know who gave him that nickname, actually. That's what I heard in the matchroom tournaments, anyway. About to take a 5-3 lead. Jungo to break. He best get his break in order because he needs somewhat control after the break, either to run out or to make a few balls and play safe, just to not break dry or have to push out. No, he's not hitting it well. You know, it's a special speed that you need Special hit point, special tip position on the cue ball. You cannot just hit the one ball on the inside and expect the corner ball to go in. Did he leave Miesko to kick and stick? I think he did. And then the red, blue, green is a big wall to hide behind. Or not. Well, whether he hit the knuckle or not, I mean, he thinks he's unfortunate, but even if he didn't hit the knuckle, he would have never got the snooker, so... His cue ball wasn't good enough. So Dimitri can make this one ball the bottom right, but then needs to stun his cue ball into the blue. Open up the cluster it's currently in, and get a shot, so he wants to hit the south side of the blue, preferably. Tough action. I mean, task A, that being making the one ball, is difficult enough to then also give a certain amount of back speed and spin to hit a certain side of the blue with his current form, you'd say he's not favorite. And hello, hello. He saw a different route. That was nice. So now let's say the pink four gives him position on the five when the two and the three are gone. So there's probably no need to try to shoot the five ball in the same pocket as the four, even though it's it seems like the bottom left pocket is the likely pocket for the five ball. But let's see. I mean, if he, if he has an angle on the four and is forced to, then okay, but... Because the 6 8 is a very doable combination. And it's probably the way forward. Yeah. So, no angle to speak of on the 4, so we can play a stop shot. Now, the next task will be to get a certain angle when he makes the 6 onto the 8. Because he will probably need to shoot the 7 in this bottom left corner pocket. So to get a nice angle on the 6 after the 6-8 combo. To get to the right side of the table for position on the 7 ball. Had the 7 been free of the 9, then it wouldn't have mattered really. It would have had options.
I like always when Dimitri finishes choking, kind of thro Ooh. throws his cue forward to kind of grip it from the middle to the back. It's a very consistent move. Okay. Never mind my disgust root. Look, when he finishes choking, he will throw his cue kind of forward to grip it at the end. It's a very uh, Yungo esque move. Zip. All right. Doesn't really matter, he just needs an easy seven ball. Of course you would say, but sometimes the angle matters, but now straight in is good as well. Okay, so good good pattern so far by Dimitri Jungo. Remember that one ball into the two? That was, and that was and he kept it the most difficult part of this run out so far, so upping his level as well, you would have expected him to. It's hard to say, in my or anyone's opinion, in the top how many these two players are in Europe, since there are so many candidates for, let's say, a top 20 spot. You know, there are only a few that you would say are in the top three or the top five. Nice. But I would say all in all, since Jungo has also uh, shown at the World Championship recently that he's... Uh, whether he finished the last 16 or something, so had a good run there. No, the three ball's going to hide the two. So yeah, it's hard to, to say really who's, who's in the top 20 in Europe. It's hard to say who's in the top 10. It's really form on the day. Yeah, that'd be a good game to play. Who's your top five European pool players? Answers not on the postcard, but your answers in the comments below. Top five European pool players. Hmm. If I would have to say very at this very moment, of course, Joshua Filler, Jason Shaw, Albin Ushan. Oh, well, then we're quickly we've quickly reached five, um, four, yeah, four and five. See, then it becomes more difficult. So, kind of, yeah, the Moscone team. Who would be in the Moscone team? Because I think Zielinski is so close now as well. I really like his game, like a unique, has his own style, but really a champion player and plays well when the going gets tough. Um, Kachi, yes. Never mind the Moscone, because I don't think he's a team team player yet. He's a bit uh, young, brash, and uh, a bit more of an individual. Uh, I'm probably leaving out some names. Who else is in the top five? I really have to look at a list or something. But yeah, we would like to know your top five or top 10 European pool players. Answers in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Uh, then you will be notified whenever we release a new video. And we're releasing a bunch of high quality pool matches I can tell you we also recently have had a video where Niels Fein is commentating on his own match very interesting to be inside the mind of a master I think the video is called and that's a, a pretty true title not so clickbaity we have a whole section where Earl the Pearl Strickland spews his pool knowledge on a whole bunch of matches. Very interesting to watch and very well, well received by uh, all our viewers. Let us know who you think A would make a good commentator and B who you would like to hear commentate. You know, maybe you might want to hear Joshua Filler commentate on his own game. Then we will see what we can do. Alright, back to the match at hand. Okay. Testy three ball. We'll hit the cue ball center ball and stun it in between the pink and the green. First shot on the 
green in the top left corner pocket. I think that's as good as he can expect to have. So tester here, and it's getting closer. We're past the midway point. This for a 6-4 lead, ooh, or a probable 5-all score line. Now, and that 3-ball does not have a nice part of that pocket to go into the top right. I'm having a bit of problems recently. The 4-ball's in, in the middle of the table, yes. 4 and the 5 look very similar to me these days. Am I going colorblind? I think he's gonna go for it. Wow, nice. See what looked like he only had like say the the right side of the pocket. Actually when you go if you guys can play it back, he almost made it in the middle of the pocket. So sometimes I can tell you as a rule as well, if you think you only have let's say the right side of the pocket, you probably have two-thirds of the pocket. So the eye deceives, I can tell you. All right, straight in on the seven, so he can draw his cue ball, oh sorry, straight in on the six, so he can draw his cue ball back for a nice shot on the seven. Looking to tie things up at five all, it will be Misko's break. So then, after all is said and done, it's kind of being played on serve this match. Nobody's, or recently, has been able to uh, create a two-game lead. Nice Good technique. Exact amount of screw back, exact amount of spin, well aimed. Good stroke. Almost too little angle on the seven. But very nicely doable. Very maneuverable cue ball. So straight in shot or thereabouts on the black. Yeah, that will do, you'd imagine. I mean, uh, he has missed easier balls in this, in this match so far. So yeah, I was just letting the player on the table next door play their shot just clearing away any debris that might be uh, en route for the 8 ball to the pocket right so we have a 5 all score line Like it, you know. This has to be no better than a 9-7 scoreline, isn't it? I mean, someone might just speed up and produce perfect pool and win 9-5, but the way it's been going so far. So Dimitri made the corner ball, but his cue ball came so far back up table, that position on the one was always going to be difficult. Now, can he see... Well, you can see part of the one ball. What to do? I mean... Almost... If you can see it full, he might cross bank to behind this black eight all the way down table, isn't it? Yeah. That's what he wants. Ooh, and still left Miesko that even the pot on the one. And if he makes the pot, the cue ball with a touch of right spin will career straight into the eight, which is good if it stops somewhere there and he's got a shot on the two. I think he can pot it in. Sometimes, you know, you just, it's wishful thinking. You kind of want to be able to make the pot since it looks likely or something, but the four ball may very well be in the way of the potting angle. Can definitely hit it half ball. All right. So cue ball didn't do exactly what he wanted, but had a nice one ball. 
Very good. Dimitri will hit this. But how to get away with it? So he's looking at the kick. It's difficult though, because he's trying nothing else but to make it. But he has to hit it so thin that if he hits it too far to the left or not enough spin, he's going to miss the whole ball. If he hits it too thick, cue ball might hit the orange five. Maybe that's negative thinking. Maybe we should just think positive. Wow, hit it well, but too thin. It's still. Oh, and made the eight ball. <laughs> that was kind of like, oh, no, yes, oh, no, 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 no. And Miesko was thinking exactly the other way around. Hmm. I don't think this one ball is makeable from where his finger is, kicking it from where his finger was. Swerving it left around the five is nigh on impossible. It would really have to be a masse. Poof. And any other kick, I don't see happen. So he's kind of forced to kick at it from the right side rail. <clears throat> yeah, he knows I think he can't make it, so he's just trying to hit it half ball, send the one ball to the right side and his cue ball to the left. So he could have done that if he hit it softer, that would have happened. Anyway, he had a, a different and probably good plan in mind. So position on the two, very tough to come by. Naturally, the cue ball comes straight into this short rail and straight back up table. So that's no good. You know, you have to play with extreme right spin if you want to bend it left way around the nine. With bottom left, you're going to hit the six. And if you don't, you won't have a shot on the two. See, extreme right he's aiming now. But even then, you might make it and you might still be snookered behind by hitting the nine. Whew. I mean, you know, if you see the one ball in a potting chance like this, you know, to then choose to play safe is so unnatural in a way, but it may, may be the wise thing to do. All right, extreme right spin. Oh, that's where he was aiming. Bottom right spin, he's currently aiming. I think theoretically it would be possible. Bottom, or sorry, bottom left. Spin it out of this bottom corner, bottom right corner, in between the green pink for a shot on the two. He's going with the right spin. Good shot. Ooh, did he get a makeable cut? I mean. Theoretically, you may have, but then you have to get your cue well quick out of the way because your cue ball is going to torpedo back towards you because you have to hit the cut at such speed to make it reach the pocket. That'll be almost impossible to get your cue out of the way since the cue ball will come straight back at you. If you do, you still hit it very short and get out of the way. Ooh. Nice. Right, so, you know, he goes from test to test in this game. Cut the three in the corner. And leave the cue ball just south of the left side pocket. Hmm. I mean, he's thinking of cutting the three in the, in the right side pocket. And spinning his cue ball four rails 
hit the rail near to the green ball and then get a shot on the pink in the left side pocket. Phew! And also needs an angle on that four ball to get to the five. Yeah, tough, tough action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you guys do here? Bank the three, swing the cue ball around three rails and play position on the four ball. That is theoretically possible. To cut the three on the left side, leave it on that rail and send the cue ball behind the four nine. Three rails is an easier task. Ooh. That is really not good. I mean, there's no use checking, Dimitri, if that was unpotable because you know it is now has to really slow roll it if he wants to keep his cue ball in the left center of table for position on the four going up and down the table with the cue ball to achieve that needs see yeah that needs such much of a better hit and hit that three ball way too thick That is a nice save. <laughs> Might be nice. No, he's got a tiny angle. Can top spin, top left spin his cue ball in and out of that corner. Nice. See that curve on the cue ball. Not out of the woods yet. Needs some quality on this cue ball. Very doable, but nice. Right, so Miesco with a few good shots in this game, and then a few mistakes, but then a safety mistake from Dimitri. All right, leading 6 5, he is to break. Trying to make the pink in the bottom corner didn't succeed and made the one, but then you have to hope for the two. And yeah. No can do on the two. So, what would you do here, viewer, viewing pool player? Maybe you just watch pool and have never played the game. I suggest you do so. It's a beautiful, beautiful game. Whether you play eight ball, nine ball, one pocket banks. That was interesting. I mean, it worked out a treat. Because now, Dimitri can hit about a third of the ball. But can't really play any safety. Can't bank the two up table. Because he's going to bank it towards the eight, I think. The two balls will first travel together. Wow, he was able to hit more than I thought he could. I mean, that's a pretty good result, even though he gave the pot chance away. Bridging over that seven. Three ball on the other side of the table. Whew. Miesko may have given this shot away had they had the chance. So referee being called to make sure he doesn't hit the seven ball while bridging over it. Oh, overcut it. And now left Dimitri with a much easier chance. Yeah, it's strange that Miesko on that shot was forced to attack, but actually to make a successful position on the three, he was the underdog. Strange sometimes how that goes. You get a chance and you don't really want it. Because the safety was not on either, I think. 
Right, so... As this match has been a back and forth affair with both players making it rain with some unforced errors it still is Dimitri Jungo with a chance to lock this game up at six apiece and it would then only be a best of five for a place in the next round Good enough. We'll have to follow this cue ball with the top right spin to get as straight as possible on the five. So very interesting to see in the next few years if Dimitri can really put the crown on his comeback and win an international tournament. That would be impressive, but definitely not beyond him. He's got the uh, winner's mentality and has experience. He's a former junior world nine ball champion. I would bet, I think so, yeah. And then it's also interesting to see if Miesko can well a win an international tournament but many people have tipped him to kind of perhaps win a major um, and although the Polish players are almost like the Filipino Filipino players used to be worldwide like so many great players or very good players I wouldn't say great yet very good players but no Polish player well, actually, one Polish player has won a major. Uh, Wojtek Szewczyk winning the World 10 Ball. Very deserved and very good performance there. Definitely not one of the big matchroom tournaments. I mean, I wouldn't call them the World Pool Masters a major since it's only a four-match tournament with 16 players, 24 these days. Dimitri takes us to six all. Let's speed up this racking. All right, he's breaking. Let's see if he can make the seven ball and get position on the one, if not the two. All right, don't know why he got up there. Maybe someone walked in his eye line. So watch the brown ball to the bottom right. Yes, there it goes. But the one ball also went, I mean, that does happen if you hit it so well, often. So it was a slave to whatever the two ball was going to do. No attacking option. So the safety could hit the two ball, half ball on the right side and spin his cue ball off the right rail behind the three, nine, six. And put the cue ball behind the four, eight. Anything else you see? Mm. We could zigzag bank the two towards this side of the table and try to get his cue ball behind the four, eight, five. That's a bit more unclear. Can cut the two on the right side, send the two to the top rail and zigzag the cue ball off both right long rail, left long rail behind the six maybe behind the three nine you always have to look what makes the widest wall so let's say the four three nine six makes a very wide wall i think that's the one he's chosen to try to get behind okay maybe not so he chose a more a less dynamic option and actually that maybe was the better option you know less cue ball movement less object ball movement he was trying to make the 8-5 the wall. So Miesko can only hit a certain side of the 2. That will make his cue ball go in between the red-green, I think. That's a 
that's a good shot, you know. I mean, good enough. Did tap the table in apologetic manner. So it did kind of imply that he got away with something he didn't really mean. All right, good though. Six all. I mean, is it looking like a last rack decider? I think so. Yeah. Don't you dare fast forward this video. It's good to see you know how players levels change what their body language is like after mistakes after missed opportunities after playing great and then making a mistake you know do you deteriorate or do you quickly pick back up the level I mean to quickly pack up quickly <laughs> pick up your level after a mistake is what makes a true top player cuz everybody makes mistakes now that was a double kiss Unintended. But what did he give Misko? A very thin cut. And then quite an unnatural safety again. Mm. Because if he wants to cut the blue on the right side. Mm, no. I don't know what he's going to do. You tell me. He... Uh, yeah. It wasn't easy. I don't know what Dimitri is... talking about, but he doesn't seem... doesn't seem entirely focused on the task at hand somehow. He's got a shot though, and this could be to take, or this would be to take the lead. Thump this two ball in with stun backspin to at least where his cue was pointing, preferably a bit further to the left. You know, this could kind of break open or kind of clear the cobwebs that they've kind of created after a lot of safety play, a lot of mistakes. All right, here we go. Elevation. Stand still, aim well. Ooh, sweet as a nut. Love it. And straight away in prime position. That's where I want to be on the pink four. Straight in on the four, since the five is right there. <clears throat> so that should be the most difficult shot that he's left to play. Yeah. Still needs nice angles though to keep it all nice and natural and so he doesn't have to produce high quality shots like he did on the two ball. That was good. Also a sign of a champion to be able to pull that out of the bag when you haven't played well yet. Score being six all race to nine. Mm -hmm. That is an important moment. All right, that's a bit too straight but could hand, can handle any position he would have on the six, really, as long as it was position. Yeah, not ideal, because I think he's going to have to accept an angle that he has now on the nine ball as well. Okay, better than I thought. He was on the eight. So Dimitri Jungo about to take a 7-6 lead. He needs two racks. Mieszko needs three. Close game. Good match. I like it. Made the one. Didn't make the corner ball. Which was the two, actually. In some tournaments, they always rack the one ball lowest. And some tournaments, you just have to rack the two random. Mostly, pro players don't want you to rack the two underneath the one because it tends to travel up table as well with the one. And then you may have, let's say, a slightly easier run out start with the one and two being on the same side of the table. So if you see a pool player constantly racking the two below the one, tell him off and tell him not to do that anymore. Two 
two goes bottom right. Tester doesn't want to go 8-6 down. Ooh, boom. And there you can... Oh, no. Hit that one so well. I mean, that two ball, though, is... is I think Mieszko, in whatever moment, is such a potting talent. I think he's heavy favorite to make that ball, no matter how he's played before. He's going to try to jump this. Oh, hello. After that two ball to jump the three ball in at such close proximity. Whoa. This match kicking into life with high quality shots all of a sudden. Well, speeding up. I mean, everything is nicely positioned, so... I wouldn't be the one to tell him to slow down. So we're about to watch a race to two to see who continues in their quest to become Euro Tour in Zank. Pongao, or St. John in Pongao, Austria champ, or champion, who continues their quest to be champion and who will sadly have to go take a hike in the mountains. So Jungo breaking better the last few racks, making the green six, bottom right, also making the one. Yeah. Two ball, what you gonna do? Hey, that is ideal with the two, three, four so close together. No other balls blocking pockets. So this, you'd imagine, may be a straightforward, no problem rack. But, is it ever in the case, especially at a seven hill score line? Seven hill, seven all score line. All good. Wants to come to the right side of straight on his pink position. Doesn't want to have to career into the eight after hitting the four. So either straight in on the four or where he was pointing or somewhere in between. Doesn't want to be off straight. I mean... Still very doable, but now it's going to be hard to avoid hitting the 8. We'll probably... We can do two things. He can stun draw his cue ball to the right side of the table, near the right side pocket. But the 8 is, is an object to avoid. Or you can screw it back. But that requires more accuracy, I think. Yeah, seeing nuts in between. So hard, isn't it, to keep that rack straight forward, it seems. Well, actually, the, you know, the, the top, top players, they do do that in, the mo in those moments. Recognizing that it may be a straightforward rack, but keeping ultimate focus and giving every shot quality attention, even though they may still play it played in a smooth way, to still... To not treat the rack as an easy rack. All right, good adjustment by Mr. Jungo. Yeah, that will do. Follow his cue ball straight in and out of the top rail, straight towards the nine ball to take an eight seven lead. Good match for his viewers, maybe not so entertaining for the two players in the arena because you don't want to see yourself make mistakes, even though you know. When does anybody ever play a perfect match? All right, Jungo takes an 8-7 lead. 
He will be breaking if it gets to 8 all, remember. All right, so. Made the one, didn't make the corner ball. The two ball will leak out in a potable position. Oh, illegal break. Forgot to pay attention to that. I mean, he broke him hard enough. It was just that only the three ball passed the breaking line and he only made one ball. So only two of the three point breaking rule points collected. Now, still needs quality on his cue ball here to avoid getting snookered by either the pink, green, brown. Yeah. Ooh, yes, no, yes, I think he's got a shot, you know. Wow, so Dimitri with a chance to win this match by going too clear for the first time in the whole match. don't foresee any problems but you know famous last words it's nice that the six and seven are side pocket shots let's say because that gives you nice potential for position on the eight good tempo on his cue ball here you know, that's often what goes in these tense situations. The top top players manage to keep good tempo control in their cue ball, even if their arm might not be as loose as it is when they're running four racks in a row. Right, so this should be it, people. What do you think? Is a mistake still forthcoming? I mean, you... You'd bet a lot of money on it that nothing would go wrong anymore. <laughs> anyway, we'd love to hear your comments on this match, on anything the Billiard Network produces. We appreciate and thank you for your viewership. I really enjoyed hosting this match. Many more to come with many different quality commentators. And I'm not talking about myself per se, but you know, Earl Strickland's back. Um, we have Niels Fein as a commentator, at least on one match, so go check that one out. And let us know who you'd like to see featured, as we have one more stun draw shot required for Dimitri Jungo to eliminate Mieszko Fortunski from this Euro Tour tournament. And that would mean that Dimitri is still in with a shout to become Euro Tour champion. One of the six stops in 2022 this nine ball to finish fortunski off thank you for watching and see you a next time